Hey everyone, today I'm taking a look at a figure that released a while ago, I believe worldwide, but it only just showed up out of the blue here in my country. This is the brand new Darth Vader figure that has released as part of the Return of the Jedi anniversary wave for Star Wars The Black Series. He released immediately on a sale here, which is crazy. I was a little annoyed actually because I bought that Obi-Wan Kenobi Vader to be my definitive Darth Vader earlier this year in January, and I believe I actually paid the exact same price for that one as I have for this one. From the distance, this one definitely looks like he's the better figure with that really cool helmet feature, but we'll get into the kinks of how that helmet works exactly. And I ultimately thought that a comparison video would make for a pretty good video for this channel. That was reason enough for me to buy him. His packaging is styled to resemble the old original toys that released for the original trilogy. Hasbro recently have been successfully putting all of their efforts into nostalgia based products and clearly it is working for them. It did make a collector out of me. Here he is out of his packaging here. There are some key details between this guy and the Kenobi one right out the gate. His accessories are what really make him worthwhile. You're buying this figure for the end sequence details from Return of the Jedi, not necessarily for or another Darth Vader figure. He's got an interchangeable arm here, his lightsaber and his helmet which can split into two pieces. Because I guess they feel they couldn't release a battle damage version of Vader without the option to try and fix him, it makes it feel like there's a bit more value here and it really did work on me. The helmet is one of the thinner types of plastic. There's some pretty cool details here, the eyes appearing to be a darker red colour compared to the Kenobi figure. Some computer chip looking details are up at the top there of that mask. I feel like the top helmet part is actually the exact same part that comes with all of the other Darth Vader figures whereas I think they had to very clearly make some newer pieces for this front mask section. You can see inside the helmet is the imprint of the top section of the mask there. The mask can slot into it very easily and it actually holds together quite nicely. Definitely solid enough that it can be placed aside on its own. Pretty cool to see actually. This part can connect very nicely. Unfortunately though it doesn't actually connect onto the lower jaw section of the helmet very nicely. There's some minor grooves here that should have some indents to help that connection go through and it does at the very least connect, but it's not going to hold on very well. There's just too obvious of a gap here where you can see where the helmet can disconnect and it feels like it just sits there really. It won't come flying off if you shake the figure around a lot, but it's not going to connect the same way that a regular Vader's head is molded. So I'm happy that I actually still do have a regular one from the Kenobi show if I'm completely honest. Having a helmeted default version and an unmasked version as a separate figure, it probably is the best way to go honestly. His arm is a pretty simple piece, just been added in case you didn't want to have him with his hand missing the whole time. It's easier to just swap out an entire arm than to replace a molded hand piece. The lightsaber feels like the classic Vader saber, it fits in both of his hands for some saber swinging. The hand is singed and it looks like the metal robotics and leather have actually melted together. Looks really cool actually for those details there. The figure has one of the easiest swappable arms that I think I've ever played around with with a Hasbro figure. Very easy to remove and interchange. Vader's articulation is really neat. His lower jaw is a separate piece to his head so both actually have their own individual movements. Vader's got some regular standard shoulder movement in his arms here. Also I think he's got some clavicle movements but it feels really tough there. Definitely feels like there's at least something there though so you could probably get it to successfully move if you really work on it a bit here. He can bend in his elbows as well and both arms can rotate and have hand articulation if you have both hands slotted in of course. He can rotate at his waist but he's got some textiles capes material in the way here. Some standard leg articulation here as well. Legs can move outwards and rotate with bends in his knees and feet movements as well. His cape's pretty cool. I'm just wondering what it would be like to have a cape that had some wiring throughout for display. Sometimes this material gets a little bundled up inside. As far as comparisons go with the Kenobi figure, I think they're pretty similar as far as parts go. There's some unique details for each figure though, since they're from slightly differing time periods. I think his shoulder armor looks to be slightly different in my eyes, that section that's heading to the control panel there. The Kenobi one features some green and red larger buttons, whereas the newer one has blue and red smaller buttons. There's some different designs for the belt and details here as well. That helmet, like I said, feels slightly different for the two. It's a different design with some molding that feels a bit wider, likely to accommodate an actual head inside. The eyes are different as well. I think the new one has a bit of red going on than the dull grey from the other one, and I really like the look of that red one a lot more. But ultimately that's my look at the Return of the Jedi anniversary figure of Darth Vader. He's really cool, but I don't see myself buying a brand new Vader anytime soon after this one. I think it's a good enough change to warrant a purchase from me. He also goes with the other Return of the Jedi figures that I have here, some of these I bought this year. I actually did a video about the Han and Leia at the beginning of the year, that was actually the start of this channel so that's something. I'm really glad that I still have the other one if I'm completely honest. I was actually considering selling him maybe to try and justify the purchase of this one but the helmet just doesn't really work for me as a full definitive replacement figure. So I plan to display him with his damaged parts and head exposed to help stand out amongst the other figures I've got. He's cool I just wouldn't really count him as a definitive figure and that's ultimately what I'm trying to do with my collection as a whole always. 